All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. Big news, man. The commanders seem to really want Eric Bieniemy, man. It looks like they're waiting to make an offensive coordinator hiring decision until after they at the very least get to interview Eric Bieniemy. And of course, Eric Bieniemy is the offensive coordinator for the Chiefs. So he has a game to worry about today. That's why we couldn't interview him before this game. But if the Chiefs lose tonight, then he's probably going to interview with the commanders immediately. But if the Chiefs win, we got to wait even longer to be able to interview Eric Bieniemy and them going to the Super Bowl how long that process takes we may not interview him for at least over a month but if he were to lose tonight we may be able to get an interview with them within a week so who knows really interesting may determine how some commanders fans even want to root for this upcoming game between the chiefs and the Bengals. but we got to talk about eric bien as an offensive coordinator why he has not been able to get a head coaching job around the nfl so far what's going on with his play calling responsibilities and why the commanders might be the best situation for him to go to even with as chaotic as we are we may be the best landing spot for an eric bien so we got to talk about his advantages and why we should want him and why he should want us as well of course i'm still a big thomas brown fan and i still prefer him as my number one candidate but i would also be very happy to give eric bien a chance and of course i got to explain why in every video i do about offensive coordinators why i prefer the younger bright creative potential genius offensive coordinator rather than the older dependable veteran type of guy but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every sunday for the live call-in show where y'all call in you ask whatever questions you may have you voice your own opinions about the draft free agency offensive coordinators quarterbacks or anything it could be even outside of the commanders it could be outside of football whatever y'all want to talk about make sure y'all pull up every sunday we just just finished the call in show went for a little over an hour just a few minutes ago make sure y'all pull up every sunday for those and of course stay tuned for all of the content like i said i have so much content i need to come out with when i have the time i really need to be making like two three videos a day but at the very least i need to be making one a day i'm gonna try to get this one out I already did a live stream earlier and i may do another video later we'll see but without further ado let's get it All right, this all started, well, really weeks back. Benjamin Albright said a while ago that Eric Bieniemy to the commanders just makes too much sense, and he was hearing rumors around the NFL, and, and some people looked at him crazy. I was like, hey, man, Benjamin Albright, normally when he says something, it typically ends up happening, and then now, lo and behold, Ian Rappaport, this morning, literally 6.42 a.m., January 29th on Sunday, he tweeted, the commanders have yet to hire an offensive coordinator, and one reason why? And maybe he doesn't want to dive into it too much, but it seems like the main reason why is that they've requested permission to interview Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy, and he's emerged as a potential key candidate, sources say. He was also requested by the Jets, Titans, and Ravens for offensive coordinator jobs. So very interesting. First of all, we got to take note the fact that there are other teams interested in bringing him in as an offensive coordinator, but not one was listed as a head coach. And that's why I feel like we have a leg up over those other teams because he could potentially come here and not only get the offensive coordinator position, but between us, the commanders, the Jets, the Titans, and the Ravens, he would have the easiest path to becoming head coach. First of all, because Ron Rivera with the new owner coming in may not be here past this 2023 season anyway. So there will probably be a vacant spot, whereas the Titans, Jets, and Ravens I see their head coaches being there for at least the next couple of years, next few years. So out of all of the four teams that want to interview Eric Bieniemy, the commanders are the most likely to have a head coach in vacancy the soonest. Also, we're probably the best combination of young quarterback talent that isn't already a proven product. So say for the Ravens, Lamar Jackson, if he were to go there and Lamar Jackson balls out, granted, your quarterback still balled out, but it's like, how much credit do you get for that? Lamar Jackson has already won an MVP and Greg Roman a lot of people are down on him and he was a and he was even able to put together a great offense with Lamar Jackson at quarterback so if Eric Bieniemy would have come in there and unless Lamar Jackson makes some insane strides passing the ball wise how much credit is Eric Bieniemy even going to get as far as moving on to try to get that next head coaching position like he so desperately wants at least 
that it seems like he wants. The Titans. I love Malik Willis, but right now, Sam Howell looks like the better quarterback, at least the more ready-to-win games now quarterback. Same thing with the Jets situation. I mean, Zach Wilson isn't it. So are they trying to draft the guy? Are they bringing in a veteran? Either way, I think Sam Howell is the perfect porridge middle of hasn't done enough at the NFL level. So if Eric Bieniemy gets greatness out of him, Eric Bieniemy is going to get a lot of the credit. And at the same time, he seems more ready and potentially better, at least day one, right now, better than a Malik Willis or whoever the Jets may throw out there at quarterback unless they go get a veteran option. So I just feel like in all of those different ways, Eric Bieniemy, even though we do have competition with, th with three other teams, Eric Bieniemy, we would prefer the commanders over all of those other situations. Again, head coach vacancy and the quarterback that's already in place. But also, we got to talk about the fact that one of the main reasons that we haven't hired an offensive coordinator yet is because Eric Bieniemy has yet to interview with us in for obvious reasons he's still the offensive coordinator for the chiefs even though he's technically not calling plays for him but he still has a job to do can't go out there interviewing people he's still in the playoffs still trying to make a run for the super bowl i mean that's just first of all rude for an nfl team to even expect him to do that no nfl team expects him to do it that's why it's considered requesting permission to even interview him so they're just letting the chiefs know ahead of time that whenever y'all season is over whether it's after y'all win the super bowl if y'all lose in the super bowl or if y'all lose tonight we want to interview him after your season is done but it's not like this interview set because again that would be rude at this point but i just think it's really interesting the most interesting part of this ian Rappaport tweet is the fact that we haven't hired an offensive coordinator because we have an eric b enemy which lets you know that they really like eric b enemy because of thomas brown who's my favorite candidate or any of these other candidates that we've interviewed pat Shermer, charles london ken zampezi who's already our qb's coach that's in house or eric studesville if any of those guys would have came into these interviews and just killed their interviews the commanders could have potentially been like eh i mean we would have loved to have interviewed eric b enemy but i mean this guy seems like he's the guy we don't want to risk it because as much as i love thomas brown i didn't want to let him leave that interview without putting pit in the paper i wouldn't even be willing to risk it right now with him potentially still getting interviews with other teams and potentially finding better suitors i say you don't let him leave that room until he signs that paper you'd lock the doors and block them in that's how serious I am about Thomas Brown. So the fact that all of these guys have already interviewed and they still haven't chosen an offensive coordinator because they're waiting to interview Eric Bieniemy. I mean, of course, you could consider that due diligence. But again, if they really, really liked any of these guys more than Eric Bieniemy, they would have already hired one of them. I believe so the fact that they're waiting on Eric B enemy shows that they really really like him and they really really want him and that also may mean that they feel like they have a really good chance of getting them because if there's a guy that they really really like doesn't matter how much you like him if you receive word or rumors or whispers that he may end up choosing somewhere else other than you you don't risk letting Thomas Brown or Eric Studesville or Pat Shermer walk out of their interviews without pen to paper because they're more likely to end up somewhere else after that so there must be something going on with this Eric B enemy situation where they probably feel like they have the inside track to make sure they end up getting them. who knows again there's competition out there we'll see and again we got to see what happens in this afc championship game tonight because that's going to completely determine how soon or how late we will be able to even interview this guy and i i mean at first i was kind of rooting for the chiefs a little bit but now i want to go ahead and get this eric b enemy interview out the way because i would like eric b enemy but i also want thomas brown the most and the longer this eric b enemy interview process holds up the longer that somebody like thomas brown has opportunities to interview with other teams and then if we're sitting here playing it safe and still interviewing guys and then the houston texans come in and want to offer him big time money head coaching job right now thomas brown may be like all right i'm not about to wait on the commanders i'm gonna go ahead and take this job now so the quicker we can interview eric b enemy i feel like the better chance we have of hiring the right guy so as of right now i'm officially rooting for the Bengals. after that information just came out i guess i should have been rooting for the Bengals anyway because that's always been a thing but now that it's official through ian rap report that the commanders are seriously interested in this guy and he may be our favorite candidate that changes everything and remember we're also waiting to interview former chargers head coach anthony lynn who's the 49ers running backs coach so if they lose to the eagles we'll be able to get that interview out the way as soon as possible too but i'm not a big anthony lynn fan anyway right now i'm tom 
Thomas Brown, number one, probably Eric Bienemy, number two, Charles London, number three, as far as all of the guys that we've requested to interview or have or have interviewed. Of course, I love Daryl Bevel from the Dolphins, but he's already said no. Shane Steichen for the Eagles. He's not leaving. That's just a dream case scenario that would never happen anyway. So outside of those guys, out of all of the guys that we've interviewed so far, or we've at the very least requested the interview and they didn't say no and didn't turn it down, I have Thomas Brown, number one, probably Eric Bienemy, two, and then Charles London, maybe three. But there's a lot of factors into this because, I mean, one thing you got to think about that if Eric Bienemy comes here, first of all, they've already said that in interviews, they're asking offensive coordinators how they would develop around Sam Howe. So does that mean that the offensive coordinator doesn't have the power to bring in their own quarterback? I mean, maybe you can bring in a vet quarterback to potentially compete with Sam Howell in training camp, but you'll probably assume that Sam Howell will win that competition. So you're really just bringing in your own quarterback to potentially be a backup. But as an offensive coordinator, to be told who you're starting quarterback is going to be the next upcoming season is a little weird and then also is Ron Rivera going to allow him to basically change the whole staff remember the whole defensive staff is through Jack DeRio Chris Harris was our DB's coach because of Jack DeRio and all of those guys and so would Ron Rivera allow the next offensive coordinator potentially Eric Bieniemy, to come in and replace everybody the running backs coach the offensive lines coach all of that and then also i mean it's already official when you fire scott turner you're already changing most of what sam howell has already learned he's going to be under two offensive coordinators in two seasons which really sucks for the development of a potential franchise quarterback but like instead of going to ken zampezi who sam howell already knows his language and terminologies and basically his offensive philosophy and things like that it may not be all the way scott turner but it's not going to be as different as if you bring in like an Eric Bieniemy or Thomas Brown where their entire system is going to change the language the words the terminologies the play calling everything the X's and O's what you call the X receiver what you call the Y receiver the Z all of that is potentially going to change it's going to be a completely new system if you bring in a guy from the outside rather than just simply promoting Ken Zampezi which I hope we do I do not want Ken Zampezi but we got to make sure we account for that especially as far as Sam Howell development goes because don't be surprised if he kind of looks like a rookie again even after what he did against the Cowboys because it's going to be an entirely new system if we bring somebody in from the outside like an Eric B enemy so this is this is potentially chaotic man I mean but apparently by how much we want Eric B enemy Ron Rivera may be willing to allow Eric B enemy to control all of that but again like I spoke about earlier Eric B enemy we technically do have competition for him but I feel like we stand out above the rest of the competition for reasons I've already explained so I really feel like it's no serious comp anyway and I know a lot of people are questioning why would Eric B enemy go from offensive coordinator for the Chiefs to offensive coordinator for the commanders why would you even do that if anything that's technically a downgrade but for reasons i've already stated he has a nice pathway to becoming head coach here honestly like a realistic pathway to become a head coach here whereas those other situations i don't really see it i mean maybe he can go to one of those other teams as an offensive coordinator for a short term like maybe one or two years and then go to another team go to his third team within three years to become head coach whereas if he comes here as an offensive coordinator gets comfortable he has to move his entire family buy a new house all of that i mean those little things kind of matter and then if he were to become a head coach to go from offensive coordinator to head coach here without having to change houses and change states and things like that and having to uproot your entire family and move them that may play somewhat of a factor and they already know the players and so not have to get used to a new facility new stadium new route to work from your house all of that type of stuff it's a bunch of little things as to why i do feel like eric bienemy would be willing to make that lateral move from the chiefs to us i mean granted going from pat mahomes to sam howe a little crazy going from the chiefs offense in general to us is a little crazy but we do have a better receiving core honestly if we're just talking about pure receivers now we clearly don't have a travis kelsey but the chiefs also don't have terry mclaurin Jahan dawson or curtis samuel in my opinion so i don't think it's as bad as people think i mean of course pat mahomes and sam howell is a huge difference but you never know sam howell may be that guy i don't think he'll ever be pat mahomes ever in his life but i think he can end up being really good to the point that it's not there's not a big enough difference to really bother somebody like eric bien and our defense is better than the Chiefs too so that may be intriguing as far because uh, again uh, Eric Bieniemy is looking ahead as far as head coaching gigs go I mean of course he'll probably end up an offensive coordinator this upcoming hiring cycle this offseason but he's looking macro and who gives me the best chance to be not only a head coach in general but for me to be a successful head coach 
and the commanders have that in defense and a lot of pieces on offense but also remember the reason that he'd be willing to leave the Chiefs in general is because they only signed him to a one-year deal this past season he's coaching on a one-year deal clearly they wanted him gone last season before going into this season but nobody was willing to give him the jobs that he wanted and Andy Reid is just such a nice guy it just seemed like he was basically like you know what we'll sign you for one more year give you one more year to get on your feet and then you for real gotta go this upcoming offseason and so it's clear that the Chiefs don't want him back he's not going back to the Chiefs he's gonna have to go somewhere else but of course the problem is he doesn't call plays and that's a beautiful opportunity that he would get here because Ron Rivera let Scott Turner call plays and Scott Turner wasn't good at calling plays at all really so why would he not let Eric Bieniemy call plays so you know for a fact you come to the commanders you are getting full play calling responsibility now Ron Rivera may be a little bit of annoying and trying to tell you to run the ball more than you want to but other than that you're the play caller but one thing that's really interesting that Grant Paulson pointed out on Twitter he said Eric Bieniemy shouldn't have to leave the Chiefs to get a head coaching job but at this point it feels like a good move for him Nagy and Peterson got head coaching gigs in Reed's shadow without calling plays but Eric Bieniemy hasn't for some reason he should pull a Lafleur and go elsewhere to call plays and that's basically what he could do with us he can come to the commanders call plays and truly get that opportunity to not only be the head coach in general but he could be the head coach for the commanders if he if he shows the new owner that he deserves to be that guy I mean you will be first in line for interviews of Ron Rivera gets fired for the commanders the new owner already seeing your work seeing what you can do as far as offense goes if you impress him enough you're the next head coach for the commanders easily but also we do need to notice John Kahn did a good job of pointing this out that pay attention to the lineage of the coaches being interviewed it's a lot of ties to Andy Reid a lot of ties to Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan Anthony Lynn with Kyle Shanahan Thomas Brown with Sean McVay, Eric Bieniemy with Andy Reid. John Com continues to say that that matters in this search. Not a coincidence. Style of play and play callers work for. They want a specific type of guy. It's also really noteworthy, like I've pointed out in the previous video, that a lot of these guys have experience running the ball as running backs coach, tight end coaches, and being assistant head coaches or previous head coaches for other teams interim wise or even just the official head coach there's definitely a certain mold that they're looking for they're not just interviewing any and everybody but i think the most notable pattern here even more than the tight ends running backs assistant head coach thing going on is the fact that a lot of the guys that we're interviewing are primarily from the coaching trees of andy reese sean mcveigh and kyle shanahan and you could tell that they want to run their offense similar to those guys and i will take it that makes me happy to hear now again i'm not a big fan of anthony lynn but thomas brown from sean mcveigh and eric Bieniemy from andy read i'm definitely down but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video let me know how you feel about this whole eric b enemy situation do you want to hire eric b enemy as your potential offensive coordinator and potential head coach in a couple of years or do you just not want to have anything to deal with them like I, i've heard some people just don't want anything to deal with eric b enemy in this commander's fan base again thomas brown is my favorite option but out of the options that we have eric b enemy is probably my second and of course man i appreciate all the support man please leave a like on this video if you liked it you learn anything and as always man i appreciate all the support man shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors who name you see scrolling on the screen right now i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out